Over in Richmond, Indiana, sits a museum full of cars that ushered in a change in vehicle production. Barney Wood takes us out and about to the Model T Museum. generally considered the first mass-produced automobile. Today we're in Richmond, Indiana at the super cool Model T Museum. So how did the Model T Museum get started? Everyone asks that question because we're in Indiana. We're in Richmond, right. Indiana, for goodness sake. But it was started by Jay Clayfoth. He was an executive with Ford. And oh, when, okay. when he decided to retire, he wanted to come home, and he's from this area. He also saw the importance of the Model T right. and said, why isn't there a museum solely dedicated to the Model T and its impact on the world? Yeah. And so he started it with a few of his vehicles, a few that were on loan. And from there, it grew into 46 vehicles and a Pete and Paul airplane. Oh, wow. Okay. Now, when was the Model T era? So that would have been from 1908 to 1927. Mm -hmm. And in that time, they produced 15 million Model Ts. 15 million? 15 million. Wow. That is that is the birth of mass production, I suppose. It, it is. And Henry's goal was always to make it affordable so every person could have a car. And, you know, by the time it really got up and rolling, about half the cars in the driveways were Model T's. But when he took the concept of the assembly line and used it in the plants, he could make them much quicker, much more affordable. Well, how affordable was it? Started out, they would have been around 800 and some dollars. Okay. When he started using the assembly line, he was able to drop that price. So it, you could get a Model T under $400. Really? Yes. So in today's terms, I think I read 825 was about $28,000. So it would be half that then? Yes. That's really remarkable. But remember when we talked earlier, they were making $5 a day. Right. So that was a good part of their salary to right. get a car. Right. Well, you know, they call it a Model T. Why the T? What's T? Well, Henry didn't have success with everything he did, as oh. we know. But he actually started with the Model A. Okay. And he produced eight cars before he produced the Model T. And that was the one that was the car that was perfect. Okay. So the vehicles that came before that, we call them the alphabet car because okay. they're A, B, C, K, N, T, you know. It is amazing. So they went A, B, C, D all the way to T? Not all of them were produced, Okay. but we believe that he had prototypes with, with each of the alphabet. You know, when I was a kid, I always heard uh, Tin Lizzy. They were called, were, is that the Model T? It was called yes, a Tin Lizzy? Yes, the Tin Lizzy. There's a lot of theory around that, but the one I believe is probably correct. The Model T was a much lighter car. Okay. So they called it a tin car. Oh, and okay. And then Lizzie was another term for a horse or a mule. So they were, you know, comparing it to the animals they were used to pulling their vehicles. I see. What's a fun fact that everybody needs to know about the Model T? It's not just a cute little car. It really changed history. Yeah. And just giving people leisure time and roads were built, gas stations, grocery stores. Right. Um, and it really created middle class in the United States. Now, as far as your Model T Museum, are you like the biggest one? We are the only ones solely dedicated to the Model T. These are all complete. They all run. We, we could have any of them running in, in a matter of minutes. No kidding. Every one of them. Well, thank you so much. This is great. I appreciate you being here and helping show off our beautiful museum. Oh, yeah. We could stay here for hours. So. <laughs> the Model T Museum is a great place to visit. Take a road trip. It's a great reminder of how basically the Model T put the world on wheels. I'm Barney Wood. Thanks for watching.
They just let you drive it? Yeah. Well. <laughs> I mean, he saw that I was like really into it, yeah. so he was like, "Yeah, come on back, and I'll I'll show you." And so they took me to this little side lot, and it's totally wow. different than what you would think. It's like the right pedal is actually uh, the brake. Okay. Middle pedal is reverse. The left is kind of like a gas pedal, but your accelerator is on the steering wheel, wow. and then you have a spark plug control. So it's this interactive driving thing, you know. So it's. I think you go a couple, you know, yeah. 50 miles, you'd be a little tired. Probably three miles. <laughs> and you're like totally cramped yeah. up. It's <laughs> yeah. like super, you know, it's for a little person. It's so funny that it's right in Richmond, Indiana. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. You know, the car enthusiasts, I'm sure, are well aware, but for those right. of us who maybe aren't, I, I think that was probably one of the more shocking things. Right, right. We kind of stumbled upon it when um, my son was really young he was really into you know thomas the tank engine and, sure. and got into these like lionel trains and old cars and we stumbled upon that and we're like oh my gosh and it's in this historic district in richmond which if you ever go there it's just so cool they've i don't know what kind of grant they've got to just fix it all up but yeah. that downtown historic district is just super cool it's, it's and, funny I, I think don't quote me on this but i'm pretty sure henry ford was quoted for saying when they first came out with the model t you know, the reporters were like, well, can you, what colors can you get it? Can you get your favorite color? And he said, as long as your favorite color is black. Right, right. Well, actually, it didn't come in black. Really? No, not until like about 1912 or so. It came in gray, red, green, and blue. Um, but he went to black because his whole thing, which is so great, is to make it affordable for everybody. Yeah. So he, it started out at like 825 bucks, which would be, you know, 28,000 in our time. Yeah. It got down to $300. Uh, and and uh, he went to black because it was, uh, the carbon in it was least expensive to produce. So everything was just to make it super efficient with the assembly line. Yeah. And, um, you know, a lot of people think he invented that, but he really didn't. It was the Oldsmobile, right. Ransom Olds, I think was his name. But he made it more efficient and got that all the way down to like $300. So that's like just over $5,000. And people back then made like $5 an, a, an hour maybe or a day or something yeah. like that. So it was still a big chunk of change. It's always fun seeing where you go, Barney. Yeah, man, that's great. Always. Can't wait to see where you're out and about next time.